Good morning. It's Monday, March 25th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, After the Party, and our scripture is Jeremiah chapter 11. Again, the Lord spoke to me and said, I have discovered a conspiracy against me among the people of Judah and Jerusalem. They have returned to the sins of their ancestors. They have refused to listen to me and are worshiping other gods. Israel and Judah have both broken the covenant I made with their ancestors. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I am going to bring calamity upon them, and they will not escape. Though they beg for mercy, I will not listen to their cries. Then the people of Judah and Jerusalem will pray to their idols and burn incense before them. But the idols will not save them when disaster strikes. Look now, people of Judah, you have as many gods as you have towns. You have as many altars of shame, altars for burning incense to your god Baal, as there are streets in Jerusalem. Pray no more for these people, Jeremiah. Do not weep or pray for them, for I will not listen to them when they cry out to me in distress. What right do my beloved people have to come to my temple when they have done so many immoral things? Can their vows and sacrifices prevent their destruction? They actually rejoice in doing evil. I, the Lord, once called them a thriving olive tree, beautiful to see and full of good fruit. But now I have sent the fury of their enemies to burn them with fire, leaving them charred and broken. I, the Lord of heaven's armies, who planted this olive tree, have ordered it destroyed. For the people of Israel and Judah have done evil, arousing my anger by burning incense to Baal. While we're deeply immersed in the season of Lent, the scriptures abound in darkness. There's little joy in Jeremiah's weeping over God, declaring imminent judgment coming against Israel and Judah for their sins. However, the entire theme of Lent is judgment for saints. Therefore, Lent is a time to recognize when the party is over. It's a time for introspection, the evaluation of our lives in light of God's holiness. Part of that reflection is a look at what's left after the party. Don Meredith was an NFL quarterback who, after his retirement, became Howard Cosell's booth partner on Monday Night Football. In the last few moments of most of those Monday Night games, recognizing that the losing team's chances of winning had slipped away, Meredith would break into song, crooning in his Texas Best Country Singer impression, Turn out the lights, the party's over. Anyone who has ever partied a little too hard the night before, knows the price of that indulgence the next morning. Groggy headache, queasiness, general despising that you're alive at all. As my late friend Homer Rothrock used to say, there ain't much romance in it. There are some alarming parallels between the behavior and attitudes of God's special people, Israel, during Jeremiah's time, and the current generation in our land. Both Israel and America were birthed as a knee-jerk to oppression. Both began as highly moral covenant people called to live in freedom and respect for their creator. Both eventually fell into sin and had to be called to the judgment bar. The parallel most disturbing to me is that of idolatry, giving what belongs to God to anyone or anything else. Those things being fidelity and worship, obedience and behavior, and hearts of love and mercy and compassion towards each other. Israel incorporated worshiping the local gods, including the fertility god Baal, in their religious ceremonies. They did this for political reasons. They wanted to make sure they didn't offend anyone. As a covenant people, they were bound to the one true living God. As sinners, they gave away that heritage to cultic worship forms that took away their vows. You see, Baal is not just a name. It describes the relationship. In the Semitic languages, it always means owner. And that's what sin is. It owns you. It's hard to miss these parallels between Israel and America. We bow at the altar of materialism. 
We please everybody who demands rights in the name of tolerance. We elevate portrayers of violence and sexual perversion and evil behavior and too many other expressions of the seven deadly sins that would overflow this short devotion. Worship in America's churches has become optional, out of date, or not relevant. All the while, anger, violence, dissipation, and deceit have replaced kindness, holiness, and self-discipline. For you today, Jeremiah was instructed to not pray for Israel. They had passed the point of no return. I do pray for our nation that we have not joined the parallel completely. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.